certain churches have decided to close. They stopped meeting altogether until further notice. In light of their decision, we're asking ourselves, should we stop meeting as a church? Before I deal with that, I'd like to remind you this evening we're meeting for prayer at 7.30 and we thank God for those who have been meeting faithfully on Zoom, whether it be home groups, prayer meetings, men's meetings, women meetings. These still continue all on Zoom. However, church does happen on Saturday at 10.30. And uh, I hope you can join us. There will be no restrictions as far as age is concerned. If you want to come, we'll have a section dedicated for the elderly. Uh, you want to bring your children, they sit with you. That's okay. There will be no children's ministry available. Uh, so what is important is that you bring your mask and that we practice social distancing. Please come on time. The gathering lasts one hour. It starts at 10.30. By 11.30, it is over. So please come by 10, 10.15 the latest. Do all the protocols that are required. And then uh, we'll have our gathering. Last week, we had a wonderful time. We celebrated Holy Communion. We just enjoyed being together. Should we stop meeting as a church? Uh, there's a church in Atlanta called North Point, And the leader, Andy Stanley, has made an announcement recently that they would stop gatherings altogether until further notice. Another church by the name of Summit in uh, Carolinas, I think it's in North Carolina, pastored by Greer, uh, he, who is the president, by the way, of the Southern Baptist Convention, they decided also to uh, stop church altogether, stop meeting as a church, at least until January. And uh, there are other churches, perhaps not as known, and uh, maybe even smaller in size, that have decided to um, meet, stop meeting, and uh, maybe just uh, have only an online presence, if that at all. And so the question is, maybe we should consider doing that, stop meeting as a church. And I mean, some of you may be right now panicking and others are saying, oh, that's a pretty good idea. We have an online presence. We have our home groups. We have our prayer meetings. We have everything online. Why should we meet in person? Um, that is a question that I've thought through, uh, especially throughout this COVID season. And um, I'm more convinced now than ever before that we should meet in person. And the reason why is simply because um, the Lord established the church and he gave the parameters for the church. The church is the, um, the pillar and the foundation of truth. It is the family of God that is called to be a light and the salt of the earth. The ecclesia, the one, ones that have been called out of darkness to represent the Lord and to be his hands and his feet here and his mouth here on earth. And um, if we just hide in our respective homes when it comes to Christianity, we're not being much of a church. You, you, you can't call that church. You can call it something else. A pseudo church, but not the real church. The real church meets and they meet in person. If you look at, you look at Acts chapter two and in verse uh, 42, you'll read that they, after becoming believers, they continually devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching. That's the first thing they did. And then to fellowship, the second practice. And then to the breaking of bread and to prayer. Those are four practices that we read of in Acts chapter 2, verse 42. The early church dedicated themselves, devoted themselves to these practices. However, what we often don't realize is that these practices were done in a corporate setting. These were not done individually. They didn't devote themselves to the doctrine of the apostles individually. In other words, on their own, in their home, reading scriptures, and that's it. Um, they didn't devote themselves to prayer individually. Sure, they prayed individually. But they didn't, this is not what the text is saying. Because if you look at verse 44, it says that all those who believed were together. This is all corporate. So it's corporate learning of God's word. Corporate prayer. 
fellowship, well, it can't be any other way but corporate. And the breaking of bread is corporate. That's why we never celebrated online Holy Communion. Because it's nonsensical. It just doesn't exist. Holy Communion must be done in person. So we have here the four practices of the early church besides giving to the needy and, um, and uh, spreading the gospel, obviously. But these are the four practices that they were engaged in, done corporately, done as a collective body of believers. And this is what church is all about. If we're not doing church this way, we are not doing church God's way. We're not being part of the church. Um, this past Saturday, we met, as I said earlier on, and we uh, had a wonderful time. We were under 35 people. We had put a cap of 50 people, but less than that showed up, less than, than that registered. And then right after we celebrated Holy Communion and remembered the cross and his death for us so that we could be forgiven of our sins and we could become now children of God, made righteous because of that blood that was shed. After we celebrated Holy Communion, I, my wife and I greeted the people and spent some time with them. It was just great to be together. And we really enjoyed that part. And then I drove to the mall. My wife had to pick something up at the Carrefour Laval Mall. And I couldn't find a parking spot. So I dropped off my wife. I said, listen, just let me know when you're finished. I'll, I'll come by. And I had looked at the parking lot. It was packed. And I said to myself, it's interesting. We have no problem going to the shopping mall. We have no problem going to the grocery stores. We're picking, we're, we're, we're pushing carts. We're touching items, picking items, items off shelves, putting those items back on the shelf. And then we're going to the conveyor belt, taking our items from the cart, placing them on the conveyor belt, pushing the pin pad to pay our, 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 um, our grocery bill. We're doing all that. And we have no problem doing that. But then when we think about meeting with God's people, all of a sudden we become concerned that we may be passing on some virus or picking up the, the, the COVID virus. And I think that is a fear that is placed there by the enemy because it's just not necessary. If we're taking all the necessary precautions, and we are, we're wearing masks, we're sanitizing our hands, we're maintaining social distance. And we did all that last Sunday, uh, Saturday, rather. We did that and we had a wonderful time. I'm, I'm encouraging you all to come to church and to be present this coming Saturday at 1030. God's people are called to be together. In Hebrews chapter 10, in scripture we read that we are not to forsake the assembling of ourselves together. We have kept physical distance and we've been in isolation for the past five months. March 8th was the last time we met. And then August 1st, Saturday, August 1st, we met once more again. Now I'm asking you for this Saturday to be present. Now, if you're concerned about your health, and you have underlying health conditions, and you feel more comfortable staying at home, that's okay. But don't let um, the fact that you cannot come keep you from coming. Uh, you, no one is telling you you can't come. Only if you decide to stay home, because in, 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 in and of yourself, you've decided that that's the best decision for you. But I'm as a pastor, I'm encouraging you to be present. To make it a point to be with God's people in the house of worship that God has provided us. It's interesting how God's word says that where two or three are gathered together, there I am in the midst of them. Now, of course, that passage has to do more than just simply fellowship. There's a passage that it has to do, deal with discipline. But still, notice that Jesus says where two or three are gathered together. There is a manifest presence of the Lord when we are gathered as God's people. You know, the Catholic Church teaches that the presence of the Lord is in the Eucharist. It's in the bread and in the, uh, in the wine. One represents his body and the other represents his blood. But the Bible teaches that the manifest presence of the Lord is in the, the coming together of God's people. That's where Christ's presence manifests himself by uh, encouraging one encourages the other the one gives the word to the other one prays for the other uh, we, we uh, 
show concern for another, we esteem each other. All these one another verses are made real in the collective gathering, in the corporate gathering of God's people. So I encourage you to come this Saturday. I look forward to seeing you and um, just to rejoice in God's presence with you. The message this Sunday is um, why settle for a pain-free faith. We're going to be looking at 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 21. Why settle for a pain-free faith? I look forward to being with you. God bless you. Have a great week, and I'll see you this evening at prayer.